السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إخوتي في الله today بإذنه سبحانه وتعالى we'll talk more about the signs of the day of resurrection minus signs of the day of resurrection this one has something to do with the chosen land when Allah سبحانه وتعالى asked Ibrahim عليه الصلاة والسلام to build his first house that house was built in the city of Mecca إن أول بيت وضع للناس للذي ببكة مباركة. So the city of Bakka or Mecca was the first place that any house of the house of Allah was established. But from that time until today, the land which is known the Arabian Peninsula was mainly a desert land. And the Messenger of Allah told us something that is very unique about that land and the nature of that land and how it would change in the future. He said about the change that would happen and would take place. لا تقوم الساعة The sa'a will not be established حتى تعود جزيرة العرب until the Arabian Peninsula goes back to what it used to be full of trees and gushing rivers. Now, subhanallah, this is one of the signs of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. We both know that the Arabian Peninsula is still desert mainly, but it is coming to that point slowly. Mu'adh bin Jabal, in another narration, he said, radiyallahu anhu, the messenger of Allah said, tomorrow, bi'idhihi subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be going to the wells of Tabuk, city, in Saudi Arabia right now, called the city of Tabuk. He said, we will be going, we'll be approaching the wells of the city of Tabuk by Salat al-Duha, around 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. He said, however, when you go there, none of you should touch the wells of the city of Tabuk. So Ma'ad bin Jabal, he said, we all marched towards the wells of the city of Tabuk and we got there and there were two men who reached there ahead of us and before us. So the Messenger of Allah asked them a question. Did you touch anything from the water of Tabuk? They said, yes. He became very displeased with them, scolded them until he calmed down. Then he said, bring some water from the wells of Tabuk. So they brought water from the wells of Tabuk. Messenger of Allah washed his hands and his face in a container and he said, take this water and go back and put it back in the wells and see what happens. Now the wells were very dry. Hardly can get anything from that well. When they pulled back the water that was used by the Messenger of Allah to the well, the wells started gushing water. And the whole army of the Messenger of Allah were able to get water for the animals, for themselves, for their food, wash their clothes with, and so on. Then he said to Mu'ad, O oh Mu'ad, if you live long enough, you will see this Jazeera Til Arab, you will see this Arabian Peninsula, you will see Tabuk, full of trees and running water. And subhanAllah, for those of you who ever went to the city of Tabuk, you will notice the change. If you go and see the pictures of 50 years ago and the pictures of the city of Tabuk, nowadays is a world apart. Completely different city. A world apart. Completely different city. Imagine this development, progress and continues, alhamdulillah, in the future, as it's progressing right now, definitely it will come back as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described it in the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari and in the hadith of Mu'ad bin Jabal. The next point, or next sign from the minor signs of the day of resurrection is a man who will come and lead people. The Messenger of Allah said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى يخر رجل من قحطان يسوق الناس بعصا the Qiyamah will not come until a man from the tribe known Qahtan comes, this man from the tribe of Qahtan, who will lead people, rule people. The ulama, rahimahumullah, said, the hadith says, 
يَسُوقُ النَّاسَ بِعَصَى That he will rule people with power, strength, firmness. And this man is a righteous man. Now, sometimes, as a righteous person, if you're in the stage of authority and leadership, being stern and firm is needed. So this man, he will come to a nation who are doing fabrication, innovations, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, committing so many sins openly. And then this man, with his authority, he will bring people back to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the truth, to the haqq, to the way of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, who used to say next to Muawiyah, not because he wants to stay next to Muawiyah, the Khalifa at that time, or the Amir al muminin No, he used to stay with him because his father was staying with Muawiyah, Amr ibn As. And the Messenger of Allah ordered Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As to obey his father, who is Amr ibn As. So while they were sitting, Abdullah ibn Amr said to Muawiyah, there will be a time of Muawiyah. A man from a Qahtan, from the tribe of Qahtan would come and he will rule this Ummah and he will lead them. And then Muawiyah got a little bit irritated, a bit upset. And he said, if the authority is removed or anyone who challenged the Quraysh in terms of authority, he will be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the people of Quraysh adhered to the teaching of Islam. Now that is so true. So true. If Quraysh kept their closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would be the ruling family until today. But with time, they start being away from the teaching of Islam and every generation becomes weaker and weaker until the authority of Khilaf al Islamiya was taken away from Quraysh and given to others. And if Quraysh come back to that, then the authority will come back. The Idni subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Quraysh and everybody comes back to the deen of Allah, that would be the obvious step for the Quraysh to assume the leadership of the Ummah. Now, this is Qahtan, one single person who will bring people back. Does that mean one person can do this? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about Ibrahim, Inna Ibrahim kana Ummah. Ibrahim by himself, he was a nation. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by himself preached the Islam, a sharia, introduced the Islam to the people, and by himself changed. Ibn Taymiyyah by himself, and then later with his students, he changed and renewed the sharia as it was revealed to the Messenger of Allah mostly. He renewed the sharia to the level that the Sahaba were familiar with, the Tabi'in were familiar with, and inshallah, after these short messages, we will continue with the signs, minus signs of the day of resurrection. So do not go anywhere, stay close. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and welcome back, brothers and sisters in Islam, to minus signs of the day of resurrection. Abdullah ibn Amr said to Muawiyah, there will be a time of Muawiyah. A man from a Qahtan, from the tribe of Qahtan would come and he will rule this Ummah and he will lead them. And then Muawiyah got a little bit irritated, a bit upset. And he said, if the authority is removed or anyone who challenged the Quraysh in terms of authority, he will be destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if the people of Quraysh adhered to the teaching of Islam. Now that is so true. So true. If Quraysh kept their closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would be the ruling family until today. And if Quraysh come back to that, then the authority will come back. And the next point, is something that it will surprise you be ibn subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
because it contradicts or disproves what is commonly known nowadays. And this is when the Romans become the majority of people. What I mean by this, nowadays we have all the Europeans are getting smaller in number. They losing their numbers. Subhanallah, in 20 years, the Europeans lost so many people because they don't have many children as other people. But things would change around and there would be a point that they would become the majority of the people. Also, they would no longer be united with the Yahud. As a matter of fact, everything would change. Their belief would change. Their way of life would change. Their allies would change. And they would become majority at one point. And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, they will come fighting you under 80 different banners, 80 different groups. Each group is 12,000 soldiers. This is over a million. It's around a million people. All of them, they would be attacking Muslims. But why? See, this is very unique. And subhanAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us exactly when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, with whom we're going to be fighting. It would be in the mission of the Middle East. And this would take between the Christians and the Muslims. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Christian and the Muslims will unite first. Now listen to this. Now, you see them struggling with one another. There would be a third power, third enemy, that will force these two to unite and form one front. Muslims will not be as, as weak as they are nowadays. Rather, they will be strong, united, close to one another to the point that the Christian at that time, they will see them as valuable power. So the Christian would come and say, listen, why don't we unite against our third enemy? So the Muslims and the Christian will unite together. And when they unite together, they will win. They will be victorious over their enemies. And when they come back from that victory or from that expedition, from that fight, from that journey, from that caravan, while they were resting, one of the Christians would stand up and he would say, we were victorious because of the cross. And a Muslim would get upset and say, no, we were victorious because Allah aided us. We received the aid from our Creator from Allah, so we were victorious because of that. And then the Christian will respond, and the Muslim will respond, and these two will fight, and the Muslim will kill the Christian. And then the rest of the Christian will get around that small number of Muslims, and they will kill them. The Messenger of Allah said, they are the best shuhada of their time. Now, here, the deal that was between the Muslim and Christian is broke. Because there's a fight now, they kill the Muslim and the Muslim kill them, it's done. There would be a war and the Christian would come under 80 different groups. Each group would have 12,000 of them. And then they will fight. And then the people who were fighting would be in three different categories. From the Muslims. Group of them, when they see this number, they will run away. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and Allah will never forgive those. Other group would be killed, which is the second group. And the Messenger of Allah said, they are one of the best of shuhada that ever exists of their time. And the third group would be victorious. They will win over their enemy. They will never go through trials. And then the Muslims would go again to which is known to Istanbul today. See, Muslims, 
We conquered that land without a fight. First time we did was we fight. We fought them, we won over them. So, but this time without a fight. Rome, same thing. We go to Rome and we will not fight. But the mu'mineen will do takbir and then they will be victorious and Allah will give them the victory over their enemy. It's a very, very beautiful hadith and a hadith concerning the subject. I encourage the brothers and sisters to go back and research and read about this. But one of the signs that we will see that never happened yet, that's one of the rivers, Furat, rivers of Iraq, would expose mountain of gold. That river will divert and the people will discover mountain of gold. Mountains of gold. And the people will fight over it. See, greediness sometimes is very dangerous. They discover this, yet they will fight over it. And every thousand 999 of them will die. And they know the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They know the hadith. But each one will say, no. And maybe that percent, because one percent will survive. One out of one thousand, one will survive. I want to be that one. And maybe that one. So they will die. Except one. Every thousand, nine hundred ninety-nine of them will die. And subhanallah, see what dunya and love of dunya makes us do. The other sign, ikhwati fillah, from the sign, from the minor signs, that we haven't seen it yet, is there will be a time that no one will make hajj. See, nowadays, subhanallah, just to make tawaf during the days of hajj is actually a struggle, a jihad. Just to make tawaf, it's extremely difficult. But there will be a time that not a single person will go to hajj. Also one of the signs of the day of the resurrection, the minus signs, is people will have no shame. And a man would sleep with the women in public places. Public places. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, well, what do you do? What do you think when the time comes, a man would grab these women and in the middle of the road, he would have intercourse with her in the middle of the road. And the most righteous of people at that time is the man who would come to this man. And he said to him, why don't you go behind that wall? He would not say, don't do this, it's haram. You're not animals, you're not donkeys. But he would say to them, why don't you go and hide behind that wall? Nowadays in, in the Western world, we say to them, get a hotel, get a room. But at that time it would be worse. And when you see them, and the person will say, the most righteous one will say, why don't you go behind that wall? This is how bad the condition of the people would be. And then there would be another sign that the people would say, the old people would say, we heard our forefathers and our fathers, our parents saying la ilaha illallah. So we say la ilaha illallah. We don't know the meaning. We say la ilaha illallah. And there would be no salah. No zakah, no fasting, no amr bil ma'roof, no nahi anil munkar, none of that. They only remember from an Islam, from the whole Islam, la ilaha illallah. And they keep repeating and they will say, we don't know why we're saying this. My father, my mother used to say la ilaha illallah. And I will say, La ilaha illallah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we have not reached that level yet. Walhamdulillah. We still have some of Islam. But also, one of the signs that you will see from the days 
the day of Yom al Qiyamah, which will be far, far deep than the day of Yom al Qiyamah, that the Quran will be removed from the hearts of men and from the page of the Mus'haf. And the people will get up and want to pray Salat al Fajr, but nobody remembers Surah al Fatiha. And they will try to read another surah, but nobody remembers anything from the Qur'an. So the Qur'an will be removed from the hearts and from the page. And the people will go back not knowing anything from the Qur'an. Before that comes, let us memorize, recite, implement, practice what the book of Allah has for us. And let us perform Hajj before it's too late. And let us fear Allah concerning money before that river exposed the gold. And let us ask our sisters to put the proper hijab before that comes so they were asked to curse them. And let us go back and while we still have time, let us fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and practice our deen based on the Quran, the Sunnah, the teaching of the Sahaba teaching of the A'imma, especially the first three generations, and we should not deviate from the path that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us upon, because he's the one who said, Taraktu fikum shay'an, I left with you two things, you will never go astray, if you hold on to them, the book of Allah, and my teaching, the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those people who uphold, Adhere to the book of Allah and to the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what I have to say. Fastaghfirullah li alaykum fastaghfiru. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.